Anybody excited about the Lord this morning? Amen. 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 Come on and give God praise and glory. Thank you, Jesus. We're thankful this morning for uh, all that the Lord has done. We did survive a lock-in this weekend. <laughs> Amen. But we're here. We're grateful. Let's bow our heads before the Lord and let's go before him this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We give you glory and honor. Oh, God, for all that you have done all of your many blessings and all of your many benefits. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. Father, we come to you right now asking that you will touch us in this place today. Lord, pour out of your spirit upon us. Move by your spirit in this house. Lord, I pray that you will bring change to each and every heart. I pray, God, that you will help us in this place. Lord, have your way in us. Have your way in me. Lord, move by your spirit in every song, every word that is said. Lord, let it bring glory to you. And Lord, we magnify your holy name. For you alone are worthy. You alone deserve the praise and glory. And we bless you right now. We invite you into this place. We welcome you into this house today in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you right now for such a time as this as you have called us to the wall. Lord, we pray right now that you will anoint our hands, that you will touch our minds. Help us to work. Help us to do your will. Help us today to submit to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we need your help. We need your touch. We can do nothing without you. And Lord, we need your guidance. Help us, Holy Spirit. Give us an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Lord, help us to respond to your spirit in obedience. Help us today in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you right now for freedom in this house, for freedom to lift our hands and to worship you and to give you glory and honor for you alone are worthy. You alone deserve the praise. You alone deserve the glory. And God, we bless you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, have your way. And God, we thank you right now for what you have done and what you're going to do. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on and give God glory and praise in the house this morning. Hallelujah. Good morning, saints of God. How many are glad to be back in the house of the Lord this morning?
you're the one and only king. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift his name up this morning.
We are thankful today. Listen, I tell you, I wouldn't be any other place than in the presence of God. I wasted so much time, so many years, for nothing, chasing empty nothings. But thankfully, God has welcomed me in through his son, Jesus Christ. Broke the powers of darkness in my life. And I'm thankful today, and I'm indebted to him. I owe him the praise. I owe him my life. I owe him all that's in me. He's worthy of all the praise, all the glory, all the honor that belongs to him today. And I'm thankful right now for who he is and what he has done. I tell you, I got a testimony. I got a testimony and I'm thankful. I can't tell it all today, but when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul begins to cry out worthy of the praise and glory. You know, oftentimes I would wonder and I would think, Lord, if you would take us away from here, if you would just come, Lord, let it be during this time. Let it be during the time where we're gathered together and we're worshiping on one accord and we're going into the presence of God, lifting our heads and the burdens are seemingly laying aside. You don't think about anything else but getting to the Father. I want to be in his presence. I just want the glory of God to fill my heart and fill my life and fill this place and fill you and touch all of you and that the power of God will change us. I'm thankful today for all that God has done. You have to forgive me. I'm just a little excited this morning and I'm excited about Jesus. My God. I'm, I'm excited about Jesus. My, 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 my. Come on and give God praise and glory. In this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, it's, it's hard. It's hard to move away from the worship. I mean, even on this morning, the Lord just, even as I woke up, the enemy wanted to attack and started bringing vertigo and all these things. And I just heard the Lord say, just worship. Turn the music on and just worship. And I began to worship God and everything seemed to calm down because there's something about the presence of God. And I know we have the presence of God with us, but being in his presence, my God, there is freedom. There's healing. There's deliverance. Victory. Is in Christ Jesus, and I'm thankful this morning. Just worship. You have an opportunity to give God something that he deserves. Not because we've been so good, not because we've arrived, not because it, we, he owes us, and we owe it to him. God has been good. He woke you up this morning. He started you on your way. He woke you in your right mind, a mind to serve him. He gave you the use of your limbs, so why don't you just lift your hands and just tell him thank you. Just lift your hands and tell him thank you. If you can and will, if you have the use of your limbs, just lift your hands and just tell God, thank you, Lord, for touching me. Thank you, Lord, for letting me see another day. Thank you, Lord, for how you touched my body. Thank you, Lord. Look over to your neighbor, to the left and to the right. Thank you, Lord, for how you touched my neighbor. Thank you, Lord, for how you touched my brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, you're a good God, and you're worthy of all the praise. You're worthy of all the glory. You're worthy of all the honor. My God, let this. Woo, Jesus. My God, my God. My God. My God. Jesus. Thank you. Woo, Jesus. He's worthy. He's worthy. Yes. He's worthy. 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 But I promise you, if you would just lay your burdens down, you can't fix it no way. Jesus has already done it for you. Whatever your problem, whatever your situation, just give it over to the Lord and he'll work it out for you. My God, just come to him and he's going to give you rest. He will give you rest. And I'm thankful for who he is and what he has done. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We give you glory and honor in this place. For you alone are worthy. You alone deserve the glory. We bless your wonderful name. And Lord, we exalt your name in this house. 
be God in this place. Be Lord in our lives. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we give you all the praise right now. In Jesus' name, we bind every demonic force that will come to him now. That will come to rob God's people of the blood of Jesus against you now. We bind fear, we bind doubt, disbelief in the name of Jesus. We take authority over every demonic force by the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that there will be freedom of worship, freedom to go forward, freedom to do as you would have us to do in this place today. Let your word go forth with power and clarity and understanding in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you right now for your spirit that's in this place. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus and we give you glory and praise for freedom in this place today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome to the house of the Lord. If you haven't had a chance to greet your neighbor, go and welcome them into the house of God. Hallelujah.
service a long time, but I feel like the Lord wants to use her and her gift, and I don't want to prolong the service, and we're going to go as the Lord will lead, and I just want you all to keep that same spirit of worship and praise, and let's, let's go forward in the Lord, you know, and I, I'll say more at the end, but I, I, if that's fine, and I, I know she doesn't mind, we're not, we're, we're just, we're not under law, we're not, you know, this is what the Lord wants to do. So we're going to go as the Lord will lead. I want her to just let the Lord have his way in her. Okay? All right? So let's keep praising God for just a moment. We, we ain't going to stop right there. Just keep continuing the same vein of praise. And we're going to welcome her to this pulpit. And we're going to let the Lord have his way. Amen? Amen. Come on. Thank you, Jesus.
Jesus.
you've chosen to dwell amongst your people. God, amongst believers, Lord God. God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for the power of your spirit. God, we thank you, Lord, that it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by your spirit, oh God. And here we are. God, have your way. Lord, we want you to have your way, Lord God. God, let your spirit move in this place like never before. God, let the word of God dwell richly in our hearts. Let us have ears to hear what the spirit of the Lord has to say to the church, oh God. Yes, yes, yes. Help us to stay engaged in battle, Lord. Yes. God, to continue to believe when there looks like there's no way. God, but you want to move, Lord. You want to move this morning, Lord. You are a God of miracles. We still believe in miracles, oh God. God, we still believe in healing of the body. God, we still believe that you open blinded eyes. We still believe that you unclog deaf ears, Lord God. God, we still believe you're in the heart-changing business. God, you're in the heart-transplanting business. God, you cause those that can't walk one more step to walk again, Lord God. God, I thank you for this church. I thank you for this body, Lord God. Enlarge their borders, Father, and bless them indeed, Lord God. Continue to use them for your glory and pour your spirit out on them, oh God. God, that when people drive by, was 
choosing Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stay engaged in the battle. 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 1. 2 Samuel chapter 11, starting in verse 1. Hallelujah. And it came to pass after the year was expired. At the time when kings go forth in battle. Go forth in battle. That David sent Joab and his servants with him. And all Israel. And they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in evening tide that David arose from his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Ilium? the wife of Uriah the Hittite. And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she turned unto her house. And the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. Stay engaged in the battle. Stay engaged in the battle. I was going through something the other day, and I was, I love the Holy Spirit, because he'll talk to you at any time, any place, anywhere, whatever you're doing. If you have ears to hear, the Holy Spirit Mm -hmm. will speak to you. And if you want to hear, keep your heart open to what he has to say to you, and trust what he has to say to you. And I was brushing my teeth, and I was facing something, and I'm talking to the Lord in my heart, and I'm like, man, Lord, I just... I just don't understand. And he said, Angela, stay engaged in the battle. Keep your eyes upon me. Keep believing and keep trusting. Because there, you will have, I don't even know how many thoughts we have in one day. But we can be on a roller coaster of emotions all day long. But one thing that remains and one thing that stays the same is the steadiness of God. That God will keep us steady. When everything else is raging around us, he will keep us solid. He will keep us in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed upon him. And that doesn't mean that we're going to enter into the war perfectly. It doesn't mean that we're going to believe perfectly. But it means that we bring our thoughts captive. Okay, we continue to look at Jesus. Because if we don't obey what God is saying to us, 
we're going to be sacrificing actually a lot. Because mm. the enemy's going to come in to rob, mm. to kill, mm. and to destroy exactly what the Lord has already given you. I always tell the kids, defend what you have. Absolutely. Keep what you have. What God has given you, we fight for it through believing. The Messiah is brought forth in David's lineage. And what I love about this story is God seen in David what man didn't see. Yeah. See, man sees the outward appearance. Yeah, that's it. But God saw oh. David's heart. Yeah, he seen his heart not just when he was 30 years old and reigning as king, but he seen his heart as a young man, as a shepherd of the sheep. And what I love about this is when God told Samuel to go anoint David, you know who the father called? All the brothers first. Yeah, yeah. All the brothers, strapping young men. Oh, it must be him. Oh, it must be him. Oh, it must be the even in the natural father's mind, David was last on the totem pole. Yeah. But God said, no, that's the one. God uses what seems insignificant to man and makes it significant. It's significant in the eyes of God. If you walked in the doors this morning and you have felt insignificant or life has beat you down, I want to tell you this morning that God sees your heart. He sees your heart after him. He has not looked over you nor passed. You buy. But what I love about this is that God chose to anoint David as king, but he also seen, foreseen in years to come that David was going to commit one of the most heinous acts of sin yeah. in the word of God. But he chose to still anoint him. Yeah. Come on. That's powerful. That God knows exactly the choices that we are going to right, make, right. but he has chosen to use a broken people right. that he can create a masterpiece oh. and make us for his glory. That's it, that's it. God, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, that you see what things I'm going to do or mistakes that I might make, and you're still going to use And not that I want to make those mistakes. Amen. I don't. Because right. grace does not give us a license to sin. Come on. But it gives us the power to overcome sin and to walk a victorious life. Amen. But the reality of it is, is that we're human. And that we do make mistakes. Yeah. And we will make mistakes. And you're still going to make mistakes. Yeah. And this story is about a man of God that was used powerfully. For the kingdom of God, he was used to unite Israel and Judah. He was used to conquer lands. He was used to bring the presence of God back to Jerusalem. And that's what I feel like the body of Christ that is preaching the cross of Christ is being used for. Yeah, yeah. We are being used for to bring back the yeah, presence yeah. of God yeah. into a society that wants nothing to do with the presence of God. Right, right, right. You right here in Columbus, Mississippi yeah. are being trained up and you're bringing the presence of God yeah. back into a world that doesn't want anything to do with the presence of God. You are going to be used mightily and already are being used mightily for his glory. God had, David, excuse me, had an everlasting dynasty. David's story was about a faithfulness to a covenant. But right after that, he commits adultery and murder. Yeah. But then right after that, he suffers some consequences. To his sin. There will always be consequences to wrong choices right. that we make. Right. But I love Jesus yeah. because what Jesus does is even though he convicts and he turns things around and we might deal with some consequences. 
consequences to our sin, he begins a final restoration process. He will always restore that which has been broken down. If we turn to him, if we come to him, if we give it to him, if we surrender to him, if we listen to him, if we set our heart towards him, God is in the restoring business. So if you feel like it's lost, it's not. That's a lie. Bring it to the truth. Yes.
than anything else in my life. And I stand before God and I say that I can't live without the presence of God. I cannot make it without the presence of God. I cannot stand without the peace of God. So God sends in David. What I love about this is David actually served King Saul before he was raised up as king. David had a servant's heart. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I read on Facebook the other day. I don't know who put it up, but they said in the it said in the waiting, just serve. Mm -hmm. And that hit my heart because we're always going to be waiting for something. Right. Yeah. You're going to be waiting for this, or waiting right. for that, right. or yeah. waiting for this to change, or that to change. And you know, sometimes in the waiting, we have our eyes set towards the future, and we forget to enjoy the now. God is preparing you in the now for the next step. All right. So let him prepare you in the waiting and serve. And I have to remind myself that every day. But David had a serving servant's heart. And where he was anointed was Bethlehem. And Bethlehem is the house of bread. And I was like, well, that's good, Lord. God, something substantial. God, let us hold on to something worth holding on to. Holding on to Jesus is going to give you substance right. that will take you further than you could ever go on your own. Yeah. Wow. Dwell in the house of bread. Feed upon his word and feed upon his faithfulness and feed upon his spirit. And David was anointed between the ages of 8 and 15. So you young people that are in the room right now, don't think because you're young that God can't use you. I want to encourage you that if God can use and anoint an 8-year-old or a 15-year-old, he can use you. King Josiah was called at the age 8. King Joash was called at the age 7. So don't feel like God can't call you if you're young. When they were young. Yeah. Yes. And then David looked like he had it all together. He was good looking. He was musically talented. He had an anointing that called demon spirits to flee. Mm. This is the man that fell. Mm. He was a keeper of sheep. So he wasn't afraid to do what no one else wanted to do. As a servant, we got to be okay with vacuuming the church. We got to be okay with being a greeter at the door. Can I, I need to, I'm going to go off for a moment, but when people come into the church of God, we should always acknowledge them. We should love on them. We don't know, I don't care what they look like, I don't care what they smell like, I don't care where they came from, I don't care. When they come into the church house of God, they should sense the love of God coming from his people. Because guess what? No one else considered David. No one else looked at David. But you don't know if the person sitting next to you is the next King David. So cherish those who walk in the house of God. Because you are the Jesus that they're looking at. When I got saved, I didn't know Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. I was 23. I knew nothing of the Bible. I knew nothing at all of the things of God. Nothing. But you know what? When I walked into the household of God in New Jersey, the people loved on me, and I'll never forget it as long as I live. Because I was a mess. Yes. I looked a mess. I didn't look like the, the church people. I didn't act like them. I didn't talk like them. Come on. Okay? Just as I nodded out in my seat, okay? So you can only know what I was doing right. before I got to church. Right. And you know what? They still would come to me and love me. Right, 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 right. What if they didn't? Right, right. And I, they just loved on me. And I go back there and I tell them, thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me because 10 years later, I'm still clean of drugs. I'm still marching forward in the things of God. 
Jesus. I'm going to put Naya out there for a minute, and I don't think she'll mind. <laughs> she went through something our first two years of Bible college. It was really difficult. And she, had, she the darkness had encrypt around her. She wasn't ready for the, she wasn't ready for what was about to hit her. And she would be in her bed and we would have to get up for class. And mind you, she worked overnight shifts. So in the overnight shift, you're still tired. Mm. Listen, when we're working from day to night and day to night and day to night, the enemy has a tendency to come at us the most mm -hmm. too. When our walls are down, when we're tired, when we're weary, when we're emotionally spent, when we're physically drained. I understand that. And I'm not putting her out there to put her down. I just want to show you an example. We're in Bible college. You don't think you can go through some things in Bible college? <laughs> so Naya is in bed, and it would be 7 something in the morning, and we're about to go to class, and no, Naya. Now, if I don't hear from Naya, I know something's going on. I always hear from Naya. Yeah. Knocking on the door. Get up. I don't want to go. Get up. Get up. I'm coming through the other, so there's connected rooms. <laughs> I would go through the other door and come through the bathroom and pull the covers off. Get up. Get up. Get, listen, sometimes you've got to go to a brother or sister and pick them up. Get up. Get up in the name of Jesus. Get up. Get up. Get excited. 
excited and praise him for it. Yeah. And then you go out and you face Goliath. And you slay him in the name of the Lord. Yeah, yeah getting some marks under my belt. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and we can be excited about what God is doing in our lives, but stay humble. Right. Amen. Stay engaged in the battle. Right, right. And David even got himself a friend, Jonathan. I loved Jonathan. Yeah. Jonathan was a good friend. Yeah. Surround yourself. I keep telling all my kids, I said, because Naya, she's precious, and God put our relationship together, our friendship together. I love the dynamic of our friendship, and I keep telling them, I said, well, look what a good friend looks like. Watch what a good friend looks like. <laughs> Naya has a servant's heart, but surround yourself with people that want the best for you. Yeah. And I'm not just talking about money cars and all that stuff. I'm talking about the best in Christ yeah. for you. That's it. People That's that it. aren't afraid to tell you the truth. Right. Right. People that will tell you the truth. Right. People that will pray with you. People that will cry with you. People that will knock on the door of your home. People that will give you. Okay, because Jonathan was supposed to be next in line to be king. That was his rightful place. But he's seen the call of God yeah. upon David's life, yeah. and he said, go, it's yours. Yeah. He laid down his life for David. He was engaging in the battle that he was called to. Right, right. Don't be jealous yeah, of someone else's call yeah, or someone else's position yeah, or someone else's place. Because when we get caught up being in jealous in so and so and such and such thing, we're missing what God had called us to do. Right, right. Jesus. So God wants to do something in our lives. And also, Jonathan defended David from his own father. Yeah. Be with those that will defend you. And I don't mean go out and fight literally for you, but I mean fight in faith. Yeah. with you. Yeah. Fight to believe with you. Amen. Fight to stand with you. David was an independent warrior mm -hmm. as well. So not only do you need those around you, but learn to fight for yourself. Because there's going to be moments and times that you're engaged in battle and it's just you and Jesus. Right. Yeah. Naya and I live in the same household with our other friend Alex. All went to the Bible college. All love Jesus. But sometimes we're all in different rooms, yeah. facing different things, yeah. fighting different battles. Yeah. And we're all in the same battle. But I'll just start praying for them. Right, right. Because God is moving in our household. But we need to be individual, independent. You have your own relationship with Jesus. Sometimes it's only the presence of God that can sweep through your room, sweep through your heart, sweep through your mind, and clear out all the confusion that has been going on so you can get some clarity, so you can go forth in the battle. But it was this mighty man of God that brought the presence of God to the people. This mighty man was susceptible to the plot of the enemy. Right. This man fell. This man had a bright future and God still restored it. But there was a moment that God wanted to teach him something. <laughs> God will direct your path. But yet we still need to engage in battle. Because tests and trials can catch us off guard. Yeah. You ever, ever have somebody standing behind the side of the wall and you come around and it scares you to death mm -hmm. and just smacks you right in the face? Okay, I'm the only person that has a best friend that plays pranks. <laughs> okay. But it, not, it takes the breath out of you. Okay, let's talk about real life. Yeah. Yeah. You ever get a phone call? That something has happened or a bill is due or right now we we're facing finding a place to live right. there's so many different things that we might be facing in its uh, transitionings of life that can take your breath away that can take your faith and shake it yeah. 
trials and tests and things that we're going to face. But yet God is in the business of strengthening your faith. Mm. Of purifying your faith. So the word of God says, go forth in battle. And it came to pass. See, this came into existence in verse 1. Came to pass, mean it came to an into existence that after the year had expired. What did expire mean? It was a reoccurrence. Expired meant it was a reoccurrence. I want to give you this thought. You being in the fight of faith is a reoccurring thing. It came to pass that you're in the test, that it's a reoccurring fight. Over and over again, that we wake up engaged in the fight of faith. That kings go forth in battle. Go forth meant to go out. It's an action word. You must put some effort forth in the things of God. You have to put forth effort in your relationship with Jesus. And what were they trying to do? It was a place of traveling, of moving from one point to the other. When you got saved and said yes to Jesus, that was just point A. Yeah. But you got to go through A to Z. Yeah. Well, we're in glory one day with Jesus. Amen. Oh, bless the Lord. I'm ready. God, I'm ready, Lord. When you want to come, come quickly. Go forth. Onward in time. This means it was a constant reoccurring fight throughout time. You are going to be engaged in battle consistently and constantly. It's a good fight. Well, how do I enter into battle? It's a fight of faith. It's not how much you can muster up. How much you can pray. How much you can read your word. How many scriptures you can recite. It's not, I mean, and all of those are good things. And I don't take away from those things, and I would never take away from those things. But what does the fight include? Believing. Yes. And remembering this. As a king, your position, there was a position. Well, as a believer, your position is in Christ. Amen. And nothing can take you out of Christ. No storm, no devil, no death can pluck you out of his hand. Nothing can take you out of your position in Christ. He has made you free from the law of sin and death. Yes. Sin shall have no dominion over you. What is your position in Christ? Justified, legally declared innocent. You messed up? Repent. Go back. And know who you are in Christ. Well, the king had an office. Okay, you as a believer, you operate by the power of the Holy Spirit. You should be spirit-led, spirit-filled, and spirit-controlled. When you're in an office, you usually have a manual. Well, get out the word of God. Okay. And begin. To take in what he has to say to you. Amen. Well, then a king also had dignity. You should walk and conduct yourself as a child of God. Mama. Because people are watching you. Yeah. Does your lifestyle reflect your relationship with Jesus? <laughs> in dignity and in integrity and in honor. Do our lives honor God as a worship to him? You have a function in the body of Christ. A king had a function in the body of Christ, and that was as a military leader engaged in battle. You have been called to be a leader to your families. You have called to be a leader to your friends. You have called to be a leader of the church. You have called not only to be a leader, but to, to be a supreme judge. And what does that mean? A king was a supreme judge. Well, you have a righteous judgment. You can judge righteously. Right, right. Is this right or is this wrong for my life? Mm -hmm. All things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. Right, right. Meaning that you are not under the law. You are under grace. Yeah. But expedient means is this 
is beneficial for my life, my family's life, and my relationship with Jesus. So you are allowed to be judge of that. And let no one take that away from you. But you're too much, Angela. Well, that's not expedient for me. That might be expedient for you. That's what you choose. But that's not expedient for me. Beneficial for me. So you are to be judge. And then maybe later down the line, what you thought was expedient for you, you'll learn wasn't expedient for you. And then you'll give it up and you'll keep walking with Jesus. But it's all a process of growth. And that's okay. As long as we stay engaged in the battle. And then you're also a priest. And a priest I know was a man at that time, but he was in charge of the sacrifice. A king was a priest. A believer is a priest in charge of the sacrifice. Are you partaking in the sacrifice? Mm. Are you looking to the blood of Jesus? Are we teaching our children about the blood of Jesus? Are our lives devoted to the sacrifice? That's what a priest was. Man or woman in this room right now, are we devoted to the sacrifice? Mm -hmm. That's what a king was called to do, to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold of the eternal life. You are called. It is an order. A called means a direct order. Yeah. Do you hear the call? The call to fight. To fight how? To fight in faith. Yeah. That battle that you entered, the moment of salvation, see, the devil didn't have to fight when you didn't believe. Because right. he already had you. Yeah. But the moment that you have been equipped with the power of the Holy Spirit, and you can start flipping your families upside down, and your jobs upside down, and those you encounter upside down, well now the enemy has something to go after. Yeah. You have been Oh, that looks good. Oh, 
sorry no further. Come on. God, give us eyes to see the roaring lion. Come on. Let me, I don't know if I gave this example here, but you're going to hear it again because it's really good. A roaring lion is 300 to 500 pounds. Yeah. That's a big problem. Yeah. <laughs> and it goes after a variety of prey. I'm talking about being engaged in battle. Yeah. I know I'm not sticking with the scripture quite the expository way. I am. That's what I am. <laughs> but there's a variety of prey, but you know who he picks off? The weak. Come on. And the small. Mm. Walk softly believers and let us guard the weak yes. and let us guard the small mm. Yeah. Mm. and I'm not yeah. talking about small as a child I'm talking about in faith yeah. Yeah. Man. <laughs> That's right. guard the weak and guard the small and the, yeah. this line is 4 feet to 8 feet long and runs 50 miles per hour yeah. wow. 50 miles per hour but it roars from 5 miles away yeah. it's yeah. intimidating Mm. See, it's not even close. That's right. It's miles away. Wow. But that intimidation tactic shakes the small and the weak to the core that they become paralyzed yeah. from that circumstance, paralyzed mm. from that situation. Yeah. And the roar declares the territory. Yeah. And it basically says, this is all mine that's yeah. in that territory. Cool. Satan is a roaring lion. Small groups called prides. That's right. Pride comes before a fall. Stay low. But what about the lion is he doesn't just go after his prey. He lies and he waits. Yeah, For the perfect moment. For somebody that's weak, weak in flesh. We, I mean, weak in faith. Yeah. So it can. Pounce on him. Mm. It will eat whatever is in its way. Mm. But when it hunts, it hunts in darkness. Mm. And sometimes when they stalk, there's no detection that they're stalking. My God. Mm. Oh, help us, Jesus. Holy Spirit is your detector. Mm. He's going to tell you. Right. You might not see it. Right. Right. You might not hear it. Right. You might not know of it. But the Holy Spirit is going to tell See, yeah. stay close yes. and get yeah. yeah. Because we got the Holy Ghost inside yes. us. Right. It is not the lion's territory. Well, we serve the lion of Judah. Yeah. And it is his territory. Yeah. Yeah. It's not this roaring lion's territory. And we have discernment. We can see things. Mm. In the spirit that the natural eye cannot see. And at night, the lion observes its prey and it strikes. And it's always trying to deceive. And it circles its enemy till it backs it into a certain place. Think about circumstances and situations that just keep circling you and circling you and circling you and getting closer and closer. And then it usually doesn't attack from the front. It attacks from the side or attacks from behind. But when we stay engaged in the battle, God's going to cause us to see. God's going to cause us to fight. God's going to cause us as if you're moving forward, it's not going to be able to get you from the side. It's not going to be able to get you from behind. It's when you're staying stagnant Ooh. then that thing's going to be able to come up upon you. Keep moving forward in the battle and resist. Stand against. How do I do that? Steadfast. Stable, mm. solid. Well, how? In faith. Amen. Amen. Believing God. Yes. Trusting God. Yes. See, the Bible says, Jesus said to Peter, Satan has come to sift you as wheat. Yeah. But I pray that your faith 
not yeah. fail. Yeah. He knew yeah. that he was going to fail. Yeah. He knew that he was, I love that too. Same thing with David. He seen what he could become. He knew he was going to mess up, but he also knew he was going to create in him a new heart. Mm -hmm. Peter yeah. had his weaknesses, had his frailties, had his inadequacies, was prideful, yeah. and had a temper about him. Yeah. But God changed that prideful man mm -hmm. and made him a mouthpiece for Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. But he knew that he was going to deny him. But he didn't say, well, I'm not going to call Peter because he's going to deny me. Mm. No, he called him anyway yeah. and made him into a man of God, but how I pray that even when you mess up, Peter, that your faith not yeah, fail. Yeah. Because when you are converted, Woo. you will strengthen the brethren. Yeah. God is using yeah. your trials. Yes. He's using your circumstance yeah. to convert your heart yeah. as a man or a woman. See, he was a believer. Right. Right. Converted meant to come back to Christ. Mm. See, sometimes our heart can go away from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Help us. And Peter was, he was scared. Fear can be a crippler. Right, mm. right. Fear can cripple you to the yes, point yes, where you yes. will not move forward in battle. Mm -hmm. But God will give you the strength to move forward in battle. And what happened with David is he sent others. Well, you go. You ever have something God wants you to do, and you're like, well, you should do that. <laughs> that would be a good thing for you to do. <laughs> Me and I have this conversation often. <laughs> you go talk to such and such. You should go do so and so. Well, you, you do that. And that's what David did. David sent Joab. He sent the servants. He sent Israel. But guess what happened? They still destroyed the enemy. See, as a church, from the outward or even in the inward, we could be moving forward as a body. But God wasn't concerned at that moment. See, he was still fighting for the church, but he was still concerned with David's heart. Yeah. See, we can be in this building as a body of believers and moving forward mm -hmm. as a corporate in the things of God. Yeah. But there was still David who wasn't engaged in battle. Yeah. You can be sitting in this room right now yeah. and not right. be engaged in the battle. Yeah. But yeah, we were dancing and we were shouting yeah. and the spirit of God was moving and God was having his way. But you can be in the seat and not be engaged in the battle. Yeah. And that was David, man of God, talented, good looking, killed bears, lions, and man, that's a man of God. And he could be in this room sitting there right now with us, dancing, shouting, singing, okay? And the church is moving, but he wasn't engaged in battle. And it said, God was still working. See, he always going to work. Yeah. He's going to work on the people's behalf. He was still winning wars. God was winning wars with the people that decided to go to battle. Mm. But David tarried in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. David decided that he was going to be, he was going to stay. He was going to remain. David wasn't engaged in battle. And when we're not, our guard is down. Yeah. We become weak. We become passive. Yeah. We become complacent where we're at. And that is is when we become under siege of the enemy. Mm -hmm. yeah. The enemy will come in at that moment when you, Joel. and it could be in a moment. Mm -hmm. One moment. Yeah. Yeah. See, this is a every minute. Yeah. Stay on, stay engaged. Stay engaged. Stay, stay engaged. And what was David doing? It was evening time, and David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house uh -oh. and there he saw a woman washing herself and the woman was very beautiful to look upon evening tide it was dusk the sun was going down you're in a dark spot you're in a dark situation things aren't going your way and the battle's raging your people are fighting the battle it's dark and what's david doing he's sleeping right right he's in bed He's comfortable hey. yeah. in his palace. Don't you know who I am? <laughs> David. <laughs> Slay lions and bears, oh. giants. Yeah. Boy, I can rest. <laughs> I can rest where I'm at. He became complacent. God does not want a lazy people. Ooh, preach, preacher. He does not want a people that 
Yeah. 
to get back in battle. And he still said, bring her. Listen, when she showed up, he still had time. Man, the Holy Spirit will give you so much time to see it. Man, I'm preaching to myself. I don't know about y'all, but I'm getting something up here. God will give you ample opportunity to return back to battle, to get your mind right, to get your heart right, to engage in the fight of faith. There is nothing that you have to do to get back in the battle, but to continue to believe right here, right now, where you're sitting, you can get back in the fight of faith. Something's been throwing you off. Something has been rocking your world. Something has been causing confusion. You might have been looking at something, okay? Even doesn't even have to be with your eyes, but you're considering something in your heart that's sending you on a whirlwind, and you're not engaged in battle. Right here, right now, you can get
Lord. Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. And God heard that heart. You would all stand with me. God heard that cry. I don't know who's done. Cast me not away. I want to leave you with this thought. God, he didn't leave them there. He birthed Solomon, which means peaceful. God is in the restoring business. Hallelujah. God will bring peace to your storm. He will birth peace in the midst of your storm. God is a blessing God. He wants you to prosper and he wants you to grow and he wants you to go forth in the things of God and in the glory of God. God's going to work it out. He's going to work all things together for the good. For those who love him and are called according to his purpose. But saints of God, you are called forth today. To engage in battle. If you need to be strengthened, you can say, well, Miss Angela, I've I've been in battle, but I'm tired. I want you to come up to the altar and allow the Lord to strengthen you in the fight of faith. If you feel like you've been passive and maybe not engaging in the battle of faith like we need to,
Change us, heal, restore. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we need your touch in this house today. Lord, forgive us if we have left the path of faith. Lord, wash us in your precious blood, I pray. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we need your touch right now. We need you, oh God. Lord, to create in us a clean heart and renew the right spirit in us. Lord, help us today to be broken and contracted for you. Lord, help us not to be lifted in pride. Lord, help us to stay humble before you. Hallelujah. Serve you. Humility. Lord, help us to stay engaged in the proper fight, the good fight the faith. Help us today in the name of Jesus. Even when the times are tough, Lord, help us to fight. Help us to fight. Help us to stand. Help us in the name of Jesus not to throw in the towel. Help us not to be moved. Lord, help us to be consumed by your presence. Lord, help us today in the name of Jesus. Breathe life into us again, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, touch us in this house today. In the name of Jesus, everything that has taken us away from your presence or has taken our minds away from you, Lord, I'm asking right now that you will remove. Lord, I'm asking right now that you will help us to yield to your voice. Help us to yield to you. of our lives. We need you, Lord. Help us today. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we need your touch. Yes, Lord, we need your touch, God. We need you, God. Lord, more than we need this breath of air that we breathe, Lord, we need you, God. We need you, oh God. We need you, God. We need your help. We need your strength. In the name of Jesus, in this dark hour, Lord, we need you, God. We need you more than ever, God. We need you more than ever. Lord, touch us, light a fire in us like never before, I pray. In the name of Jesus, from the youngest to the eldest, Lord, light a fire in our hearts, God. Give us a desire in our heart to run after you and to go after you, Lord. Help us today in the name of Jesus. Lord, we need you right now. We need your touch. We need you, God. Oh, God, we need your help today. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for your word that you have given us today. Lord, thank you right now. Lord, help us to hold fast to what you have said and what you have done. Lord, help us to guard your word with our heart. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you right now. We praise you right now for your presence, God. Thank you for your touch. Thank you for the sweet spirit that's in this house today. Lord, we bless your holy name for you alone are worthy. You alone deserve the glory. There is none like you, Lord, in all the earth. And we thank you right now for being our Heavenly Father. Thank you right now, Lord, for what you have done and everything that you're going to do. God, we thank you right now. We bless your holy name in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray over every single person that's in this place. Lord, I pray that you will help us today. I pray, God, that you will touch hearts, that you will change lives. I pray that you will touch in our homes, touch in our marriages. Lord, touch in our relationships. Help us to hear you. Help us to be obedient to your voice. Help us today, God, to not let our conscience become as our seared iron, God, but help us to yield in the name of Jesus. Help us not to override your spirit, but help us to listen. Help us to obey your voice. Help us to be changed by the power of God. Create us into the very image of Christ, I pray in the name of Jesus. Anything that's not like you, Lord, we pray that you will take it away. Lord, I'm praying right now that you will help us today to yield to your spirit, God. Help us in the name of Jesus. Lord, help us to hear your voice. Lord, help us to hear. Help us to yield. Help us to yield. Help us to say yes. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we need your touch. God, I pray that you will help us, God, to carry this word to this dying world. Lord, help us to apply it to ourselves first. And Lord, that our light will shine in this dark and evil world. God, that somebody's life 
will be changed by the power of darkness, by the power of God. Lord, we cast out darkness today. We cast it out in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you right now for your presence. We thank you right now for your touch. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we give you all the glory and praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hug somebody next to you and encourage them in the Lord. Stay engaged. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My God, my God. Powerful word from the Lord. And I'm thankful for the word of God today. Amen. I'm thankful for what the Lord has done in this place. What the Lord is doing. Amen. 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 Let's show them some love today, saints of God. Sister Andy and Sister Naya have come and been a blessing to us. They have truly been a blessing to me. And uh, as I said before, on Friday night, we had our lock-in, and we stayed up all night. And I tell you, how many of y'all young people saw? Like y'all feel every bit of... I know my man Raw, he's he pretty sore. He played hard, boy, he played pretty hard. And all of, a lot of you young people were out there, and I mean, man, they were running and playing basketball, football. It's three and four o'clock in the morning. I'm like, Lord, just hold me up in this chair. Lord, help me not to slump over too hard. <laughs> I just didn't want to pass out. <laughs> but I thank God we made it. Thank God for Sister Angie, Sister Naya, I mean, their spirit and how they helped throughout the lock-in and they got the kids engaged. We had a lot of fun. We had a lot of games. And it was just a blessing. And we had a great time in the Lord. You know, as she said, I wish we had this when we were younger. I wish we had some of the things that we were able to uh, have today that we are able to engage in. The Lord has truly blessed you all. You all have something rich. You all have something of great value. And you all need to cherish that. You yeah. need to cherish every moment that you have with the Lord and every word that God has given us. Amen? Amen. So today, we're going to be a blessing to her and Sister Naya. Weren't you blessed by the worship today? Amen. 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 Sister Naya, you took us to a level today, I tell you. My God. I could just feel the praises of God in this place, and I'm thankful for her Amen. and the gift that God has given her as well. She's a wonderful praise and worship leader, and just wonderful. Uh, these are wonderful women of God, and I met them at kids' camp, and I tell you, their spirit is the same, and we have a kindred spirit, and I'm thankful that they stand for truth. They stand for truth, and I'm, I'm with them, and, I'm, and we're together, and God has blessed us to stand together, and we're thankful for that. So today we're going to be a blessing to them. Uh, as we get ready to leave this place. So dig in your pockets. And I'm going to take up the uh, offering, and this offering will be for them. And if you have your regular tithe, uh, we'll put it in the great bucket, just your tithe. But all of the offering today will be for Sister Angie and Sister Naya. All right? And let's pray for Pastor Tory. He's in North Carolina. He's preaching the gospel there. Him and, uh, he's there with Pastor Jason Collins. And he's a wonderful man of God, and we're thankful for how the Lord is blessed and open doors there. And uh, let's pray his strength in the Lord. Pray that the Lord will continue to open the doors that need to be opened. Pray for the anointing on his life. And we're going to pray that God will continue to bless us and bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. You know, it's great to have somebody who can stand with you, who's in the gospel with you. You all have a unique relationship, and I know the Lord has joined you all together. And I'm thankful, likewise, for my own brother who's, who's able to preach the gospel. I'm able to preach along with him. And I'm thankful for that as well. So keep us lifted up before the Lord. Pray for the leaders all over this country, all over the world, who are preaching Christ and him crucified, who are holding up that bloodstained banner. We're going to keep them lifted up in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to stand and we're going to let you go. We're going to pray. And... Uh, I can read some of them, but I just can't. Sometimes I just can't get it. You have to forgive me. But let's keep in mind the Women's Fellowship on next Saturday at Sister Lori Jameson's house. Uh, you women know everything. See her, my wife, uh, about the details. And uh, I believe you all will have a wonderful time at the Lord. And I want to say thank you for all of you who were part of the lock-in and for the help. Sister Bernadette, she's not here, but 
man, she hung in there with us. She took care of us. Yeah. And I'm thankful for her and thankful for how she helped take that load off. Amen. Yeah. We're thankful for that. We ain't good. We had a great time. So let's continue to pray for them as they get ready to leave and hit the road. We're going to keep them lifted up in prayer and pray for the safety of their travel and pray for the children. And I believe God has blessed those beautiful young people. Did, did y'all have a good time? It was a joy having you all. I, I promise it was a joy having you all and just getting a few minutes to talk and just seeing you all engage and uh, worship the Lord. And you're always welcome to come back, be a part of what God is doing here. You all know that. You all are at home when you're here. So we thank God for you all. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We give you glory and honor. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done in this service. Lord, we ask right now, Lord, that you will bless this offering. Let it be for the upbuilding of your kingdom. And God, I pray right now that you will touch Sister Angie and Sister Naya and their group. Lord, as they will travel and go back to where they come. Lord, we're asking right now for traveling grace. We're asking right now, Lord, that there will be no breakdowns, that you will protect their vehicle. Lord, that you will bless them, that you will strengthen them in the name of Jesus. And God, we ask right now, Lord, that you will continue to keep us in the center of your wheel as we leave this place, but not your presence. Lord, help us to continue to be engaged in the fight. And God, we thank you right now for all that you have done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on and bring the Lord that offering today. And let's be a blessing to Sister Naya and Sister Angie.